I'm educated as a biochemist with a PhD in organic chemistry. But before that, I was a farmer. I was a sheep farmer, a vegetable producer. And that was one of the most fantastic backgrounds I've had. Because when I studied biochemistry and organic chemistry, I had a feeling that I'd met everything I learned at the university. I've seen that at the farm. So I, the first position I had was as an as associate professor in cell biology, then a professor in microbiology. Then I was head in, uh, of two national research institutes in Norway. After that, I became a professor in biochemistry and also the CEO in a pharmaceutical uh, company, Biotech Pharmacon. I was the founder of that company based on own invention. One of these are the, the beta-glucans, but another also molecular biology enzymes used all over the world in the, in the PCR, the D gene analysis, used everywhere. That is our inventions. And after that again, when I retired, I started wondering about something. I still don't understand why it had to be a retired university professor who went into looking at colonists. Nobody had done that before. Even though colonists is the, mo the, the most prominent species in the whole North Atlantic, it's 80% of the whole biomass is in the colonists. And no scientist had before me ever studied the nutritional value of this organism, which is the food organism for everything in the, in the Arctic Oceans. Although colonists, it looks like a small shrimp. It looks like a, 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 a krill much smaller though, they, they look like small crustaceans. But they divided and became, uh, developed in different directions 200 million years ago. So they are, they are not, they look very similar, but they are not similar. When it comes to the chemistry, that has of course also affected the chemistry. It's very unique with the calanus oil, the oil which this organism store as an energy source, is that they store it as what we call as chemists wax esters. Wax, wax esters, call it. Fish store them like three glycerides, like in, in, in uh, cod liver oil. And krill store them mainly as phospholipids. But from a chemical point of view, these are very different. Let me explain what the differences are. Phospholipids from krill, they are digested very quickly in the stomach and the upper part of the, uh, the intestine. Taken up from there. Uh, the three glycerides, uh, the, what you have in cod liver oil, they are digested more equal along the whole uh, the, uh, small intestine. Whereas the colonous oil is not digested like any of these two. That was one of the reasons why they said to me, experts said to me that uh, this will not work because it is not digestible. It doesn't digest good enough. It's not properly digestible. I said, if, if this major energy source in the North Atlantic would not be digestible, all the animals there, fishes, birds, everything, they would starve to death. There's something wrong here. I don't li like to look into the textbooks. I look into the textbooks, but I always let observations rule over textbook knowledge. So we did the experiments, testing how the colorless oil was 
affecting growth, how it was compared to other oils when it comes to energy availability and digestibility and biological effects and all that. Strangely, that hadn't been done before. But studies with humans carried out in the humans, a United States has confirmed that the, the omega-3 fatty acids from colonus oil is equal to or even better than the pharmaceutical grade omega-3 preparation. Also it is at the moment as a, you have the license from the government on a, what we call an experimental license just uh, so that everybody is not starting to, to to harvest. It's only one company given the rights to harvest a certain quantity every year. So, so far it is a limited, uh, it's not available to everybody. It's available to calendars only. And you are the only company in the United States which can get hold of this oil. Well, this is of course since Colonus is a food organism for everything else. There is, a, there is a, of course, a, a very sound skepticism in taking away the food. But when you consider the quantity, it's between 20 and 40 billion tons produced every year. In the, in the period of three to four months. And that is 20 times the biomass of all the other living organisms in the ocean. But we started to harvest colonists on locations where this is, of some reason or another, is floating to the surface in very dense populations. And there are no fishes and nothing is actually eating on it there. So we scoop them in. And so when we harvest it, we harvest only a kind of surplus, of a super surplus. Now I saw in the newspaper from Norway yesterday, yesterday, that was the 5th of October 2016, that scientists have now given the recommendation on the harvesting of colonists and they see no risks whatsoever that harvesting or the quantity we are taking out would have any influence whatsoever on the ecosystems we are talking about. I had observed that salmon in and trout in farming. They were given an excellent food, but they had a, a quality uh, problem in that they stored too much belly fat. But wild salmon and wild trout, they don't store belly fat. So I wondered, uh, what, what do the wild salmon get? which this farm salmon doesn't get. And that's well, is there something we could add and see if the salmon got uh, rid of the belly fat? But we decided to go up to my colleagues at the university in Tromsø and start starting studying the deposition of fat in experimental animals under very controlled conditions. It was first on how the colonist oil affected the plaque depositions on the coronary uh, art arteries, to the, to, uh, arteries to the heart. And it worked very well against that. But a Friday afternoon, I was sitting in Oslo on an outdoor restaurant drinking beer when the phone rang. But the reason he phoned me was that he said that in the group, the group of experimental animals, which hadn't got colonial soil, 
you didn't need, need to weigh or measure. You could see it with your, with, with your open eye that these were, I wouldn't say they were at no belly fat, but the belly fat was very low compared to the other. You didn't need to measure anything. But the point was that these animals, they weigh the same. So the conclusion must be that the culinary soil has redirected the deposition of the fat in the body. And the, re the deposition of the fat didn't come from the culinary soil. That come from this diet they were eating. So the culinary soil is redirecting fat deposition or whatever you eat. That was the biggest. Uh, he phoned me because I said that that is what we expect. That is what I expect. I have no theoretical. It's, it's intuition. The sweet spot here is that it is going through the, 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 the small intestine, undigested, because we don't have any enzymes, we can split it. So it goes undigested to the end part of the small intestine, ending up in the uh, geogen, uh, duodenum. And there are an enzyme, an esterase, which splits it. And that esterase sits on a type of cells which are the receptors for, uh, which controls glucose metabolism. And also, that is the quickest way for the omega-3 fatty acids to be taken up. You have two points in the digestive tract which are crucial and essential for you regulating food intake. You have one which, in the upper part, which regulates appetite. And you have one in the end which say, enough is enough, stop. Very many processed food are so easily digestible that they pass through and you don't get enough of the non-digested materials to, 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 and to, reach, to reach the stop signal, say, stop, stop, stop eating. You only get a eat signal. You don't get a stop eating signal in sufficient quantity. And that is, that is what, where the culinary soil is doing, a, a, a very important point, because that is, as far as they know, the only oil or omega-3 containing oil which goes undigested through the small intestine all the way to the to where the receptors for the appetite. And then the conclusion of that is that you not only have a source of omega-3 fatty acids, but you have also a regulator of appetite. So you have it all. That was beyond my expectations. But I'm very proud of this. <laughs> Calanus is the natural source of astrocentin in all the birds and fishes getting red color in the, in the first case with the, in the feathers or fish in the, in the, in the muscle like uh, salmon and trout and so, they get this pig pigment from calamus, mainly. And the way we are able to get out the calamus oil from the whole calamus is a very gentle process where you, where you get all the astrocentin which is present in this small animal over into the oil. Calamus is is an organism which is a pure vegetarian. Krill is eating both an, uh, zooplankton and phytoplankton. Colonus is eating only phytoplankton, plant plankton. So it's a pure, pure, pure uh, vegetarian. So it's the one producing all these secondary metabolites we need, like the omega-3. That is that is the first concentration point. But in addition to that, 
colorless contains uh, its uh, relation to the plant kingdom is very obvious. Unlike fish oil, krill oil, that it contains quite a lot of a special fatty acid. It's called steroidonic acid, which is found in plants. And it is a very interesting uh, fatty acid because it has the ability to prevent building up of uh, the precursors for the inflammatory symbols you get uh, when you get the damage in the cells. So it has its own, own anti-inflammatory component in it. That's one thing. And that comes from the plant kingdom. Another thing which comes from the plant kingdom is a substance called ergosterol. Ergosterol is the plant kingdoms uh, similar to our cholesterol. And ergosterol has a very distinct effect on our own ability to build up uh, or to, uh, the level of cholesterol in our body. The mechanism is unclear, but the the facts are undisputable. And the colorless oil, since it's not fractionated or purified or extracted with alcohol, as many of these so-called pure, you have it all as nature made it. This is how nature made the oil. That is what you get here. And in the time, at least I will go for products for food, which is like Nature made them. Here's one made by nature. I, I take, uh, I, I was the first to make it and I was the first to take it and I used it ever since. 